Southern Manitoba consists mainly of three ecozones. The boreal forest, the boreal plains, and the wide open prairies. But in the southwest corner of the province, there is one place that doesn't seem to fit within these categories. Spanning 10 square kilometers near the town of Carberry, it resembles a barren desert more than anything else. And with grasslands, sand dunes, evergreen and deciduous forests all existing in the same region, this is one of the most unusual and unique areas found in Manitoba. This is the Spirit Sands, one of only four substantial sand dune areas in Canada. Created roughly 10,000 years ago, it's what's left of a massive river delta that once deposited sand here as it entered the ancient Lake Agassiz. Considered sacred by the surrounding indigenous communities, all fighting was prohibited at this location for thousands of years. Although the Spirit Sands resemble a desert, the area receives over 300 millimeters of precipitation each year, which is double the amount required for desert classification. Despite this, the Spirit Sands contain an interesting mixture of desert-like vegetation, including two species of cacti, the pincushion and the prickly pear. Able to withstand temperatures less than minus 40 degrees Celsius, these northern cacti survive the winter by reducing the water content in their pads, preventing them from freezing. Also in this dry landscape are a wide variety of cold-blooded reptiles, rarely seen in this diversity north of the 49th parallel. In fact, the spirit sands are home to five species of snakes, eight species of amphibians, and Manitoba's only lizard, the northern prairie skink. One of only three kinds of lizards in the country, the skink survives the long winter by digging deep below the frost line in the area's sandy soil. Isolated from its species range in the United States, this small corner of the province is the only place in Canada where the northern prairie skink can be found. In the few bodies of water close to the spirit sands, there lives a dense population of western painted turtles. On a hot summer day, things can get a little overcrowded at some of the more sought after resting spots. Back on land, tiger beetles sprint across the dunes at a speed of two kilometers an hour. This may not seem like much, but taking into account their body size, it is the equivalent of a human being running up to 500 kilometers an hour. Tiger beetles move so quickly that their vision can't quite keep up, temporarily blinding them when they run. It's because of this that they prefer to travel in short bursts when chasing down their prey. In the spirit sands, even the landscape is active, as the dunes themselves are in a constant state of motion. You can't tell by looking at them but some of these sand dunes are moving at a rate of up to 20 centimeters a year. The strong northwest wind that blows over this area carries sand particles up the backside of the dune 
and onto the peak. As the sand accumulates, it will, at some point, trigger a small avalanche down the front of the dune, forming an area called the slip face. Through these small avalanches, the dune moves slowly across the landscape in a southeasterly direction, overriding and killing any plant life in their way. The area is basically a slow motion battleground for dominance between the sand dunes and the plants. But because of the substantial amount of rainfall that the spirit sands receive, the vegetation is able to fight back in its own unique way. The battle begins when some of the tougher members of the local plant family, like skeleton weed and sand dock, take root in the sheltered slope of the dune. Once a few plants are established, other grasses move in, such as big blue stem and wild rye, with roots that reach deep into the sand. The more roots that are in the dune, the less moisture is lost from the sand, facilitating the invasion of larger shrubs like creeping juniper. Once this happens, the dune's movement is restricted and its slow, long journey comes to a halt. In a few years, the stabilized dune will resemble many of the rolling grassy hills that surround the spirit sands. Currently, the plants are winning this battle. As the original dune area has gone from 65,000 square kilometers to less than three square kilometers of open sand today. It is very likely that within our lifetime, all of these dunes will be stabilized and the open sand will turn entirely into grasslands. But despite this process, the sand beneath the ground is still shifting, making the soil unstable and prone to erosion. This has resulted in the formation of several unique natural features, including one of the most breathtaking sites in southern Manitoba. Two kilometers from the edge of the Assiniboine River, the Devil's Punch Bowl is a mysterious 30 meter deep depression right in the middle of the spirit sands. The creation of this unique feature is the outcome of hundreds of years of erosion. Just below the sand lies a series of underground springs trapped in a watertight layer of clay. Over time, these small streams have cut away sections of the Assiniboine River Bank, causing the bank to collapse, forming this bowl-shaped crater. Through continued erosion, this depression has eaten away at the river bank, tracing the pathway up along the underground spring. Like an oasis in this dry landscape, the water facilitates the growth of large white spruce and aspen trees, which draws in animals from all around. Just like the surrounding sand dunes, the Devil's Punch Bowl and the springs that feed it have shifted and moved over hundreds of years, continually shaped and molded by the wind and water. And although the dunes are being stabilized and the open sand is rapidly disappearing, the spirit sands are never really at rest, existing in a unique state of continued recreation and renewal. <laughs>